Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today, we're diving into the exhilarating world of Universal Studios Hollywood Studio Tour. Join us as we embark on an unforgettable journey through iconic movie sets, thrilling attractions, and behind-the-scenes secrets. Get ready for an adventure like no other. Stay tuned for part one of our series, right here on our YouTube channel. So look over to your left hand side, get ready to wave goodbye to everybody because guess what? You're never ever going to see them again. That's right. We're going to be taking off on our adventure. Wave goodbye. See you. So long. Bye Dennis. Bye Jesse. Bye everyone. We're out of here. Going to take the show on the road. They're the best. I love them. Even though Rob. Those me five bucks. Ooh, I'm very excited to get on the tour. But first, a few safety rules. If you need guest assistance or have a medical emergency, if you drop something of value off the side of the tram, or if you have any sound or video issues, reach up and grab the red emergency cord that runs along the center ceiling of the tram. I'll be back to assist you as soon as it's safe to do so. Otherwise, during the entire tour, please remain seated, keeping your arms and legs inside the vehicle at all times. The studio is private property, and if at any time during the tour you drop your phone, you just can't wait to use the restroom, pull the cord, and remain seated. Please, no smoking Frankenstein of any kind during this tour. You're going to have to put that out, big fella. And be prepared, Art is your eye and you haven't seen it yet. Try your streaming services. Most of these are all available out there as well. And coming in theaters, Trolls, just in a few days as a matter of fact. Now, I was telling you a little bit about the 400 acres that we're on out here. It's so large, we're considered our own city. Real Universal Studios Fire Station 51. Job these firefighters to make sure that we're safe on the front lot, the back lot, up in the theme park as well. We have a medical facility, sheriff's substation, a bank, a dry cleaner. We actually refer to it as burning in the industry. And the big doors that we're passing to these sound stages are called elephant doors. If any of them are open, take a peek inside. It looks like a blank canvas unless they have some sets that are uh, being built. That's how they can bring in the sets over there. So over here on our left-hand side, this, and hello, good afternoon. You can peek in that door there. Uh, this. These two sound stages are two of the three that they use for Bel Air, which is a dramatic version of the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Uh, you can watch that on Peacock. And I've got a couple of stars from the show that wanted to tell you a little bit more about the fun they're having. Did you just grab me water when you can? Well, so what is you put egg on, on the cheese? You put cheese on the eggs, on the cheese. It's right. Whoa, how many seats do you think are in there? I don't know. It's got to be a lot. Yeah. We could probably fit the whole Bel Air casting crew in there. No, we gotta get one of these for the mansion. <laughs> and for sure. Yo, lucky for y'all, the Banks Family Mansion lives right here on the Universal lot. Right. Some of Bel Air's most pivotal scenes have been filmed right here. Jabari, what have been your most memorable moments? Oh, I don't know. I mean, there's so many to choose from. You know, I love you know, the four-year set where Will first enters, and at that moment, his life changes forever. What about you? Well, ooh, the Bel Air Academy gym set is here too, and I remember you had me sit in that cold ice bath for hours. Oh, yeah, 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 and that was really fun. <laughs> I still can't feel my toes. <laughs> no, but seriously, my favorite part of this lot is the talented crew who put it all together from hair, wardrobe, makeup, set design, props, and transportation. Transpo, yes! Yo, Transpo is the best, and they have the sweetest rides for us to play with. Actually, speaking of, if we're gonna get a ride like this, we'd better go talk to Transpo now and let these people get back on the tour. Come on, man. And you can check out Bel Air on Peacock. So over on our left-hand side, we're driving by one of Universal Studios' post-production facilities. They work on shows in there like Bel Air. Sometimes they do editing, adjust the color. 
Directly in front on your left, this hangar type building, it's called the Mill. So when you heard Jabari Banks talking about some of his favorite sets from the series, that's where they make them, right inside there. They can work around the clock 24 hours a day, seven days a week if they're needed if the need arises for that. And then directly in front of the mill is an area, this parking lot we call Base Camp. Every production has one of those. That's where they set up hair, makeup, wardrobe. And the stars of these productions have their own dressing rooms out there as well. And it's close enough to the sound stages or to a back lot that they can go right to work. Speaking of stars, y'all came here to Hollywood to see some, right? So I've got your first celebrity sighting of the day coming up over here on our left-hand side. There he is, Ted DeBear. I know you're like, Rob, it's such a bad joke. I know, I'm sorry. But listen, you got to think about this, okay, for a second. He's got his own TV show. How many of us can say that? We're going to be able to see it coming here in the new year. Ted stands in front of these great bungalows, and these great bungalows used to be dressing rooms for some of Hollywood's most famous celebrities. Jimmy Stewart, Doris Day, Rock Hudson, Sylvester Stallone all had dressing rooms in here. They're now offices for some very talented writers, directors, and producers here in Hollywood. Typically, as we drive by here, you see a lot of big name celebrities coming and going from these doors because a ton of casting happens in here. If you're a screenwriter and you wanted to sell your script, you would love the opportunity to meet with producers in one of these bungalows, right? Mark Platt works out here. He's produced La La Land, and they're working on Wicked's Part 1 and 2. They're very excited about that. In fact, take a peek down here, and you're going to see a balloon that has Wicked right next to his office sign. That's going to star Ariana Grande. Phil Goldfine, Hollywood Media Bridge, they've got some exciting projects in the works as well. But there's one bungalow that we're going to go by. It looks different from all the other ones. You know why? Because there's a silhouette painted on the wall over here. Bungalow 5195 used to be Alfred Hitchcock's old office. Lou said you can move into that office. I said, no, I can never be in Hitchcock's office. That should be a shrine, a museum. Very exciting, just to know that he was there and walk by and know he was in that office. Hitchcock has influenced every director. I saw Hitchcock walking around the commissary. Hitchcock had his bungalow on the lot. I used to go see Alfred Hitchcock. I loved working with him. Yeah. I highly respect him. He really understood fear and terror. The birds. That was a really scary movie. The birds? Oh, man. That had me looking at crows like for the next 10 years. Psycho, of course. Vertigo. One of the all-time great masterpieces. His cop is masterpiece. And over here on your left-hand side, some of our newest sound stages, most recently Lopez versus Lopez using those. So that's the end of the first part of the tour. We're going to head into the back lot. It's my favorite part. You'll probably figure out why, because over here on your right-hand side, this whole area is called our Metropolitan Sets. It's about four acres in size. By the way, as you figured out, these are not real buildings. We call them facades, the front and side. Look closely at the brick and mortar as we go by, because that's not real either. It's foam rubber and plastic. We're going to go inside there in a second, but there's a few things that I want to show you on the outskirts first. I want to show you what it looks like when you see these sets in an actual production. It's hard to imagine what they look like. So see that brownstone over there, watch this, the scene from Bruce Almighty. Place the door! <laughs> I'm in the shower! Uh, it's like that. There you go. It's like that. I was like, good. Oh, you're done now. Great. B E A beautiful. Well, this tram only goes about 8 to 10 miles an hour. I wish I could get it up to 88 miles an hour, because you know what I do? I bring you all back to the future. I can't do that, but what I can do is I can bring you to Hill Valley in Courthouse Square where they filmed the movie. In fact, this road that we're coming down right now, that's where the DeLorean got up to 88 miles an hour and boom, went back in time. There it is, the courthouse. Some of you may be like, wait a second, Rob, it looks different from what I remember. Yeah. You're right. It became so recognizable, other productions wanted to use it, so they made some changes, but right through those doors, the original set. It was actually the back lot of the Courthouse Square that inspired the entire climax to Back to the Future. I had scenes up at the clock tower on that ledge. So there was a ledge about that wide. And I was standing inside looking at the ledge. And I already had vertigo. I just thought there's the no open, way in the world. No way I would have stand on the open that. Time I was up there for quite a while. Of course, I had a cable. <laughs> <laughs> so this area was often used in the Ghost Whisperer, the Kill a Mockingbird, Gremlins. And it was a town of Rutherford Falls and Rutherford Falls on Peacock. That stars Ed Helms. When you look around here, you can obviously figure out some of the scenes that we would use, right? Small town feeling. Got a lot of them you can do down here in different areas. What if you got to go to the big city? You don't have to go far in our back lot. Watch this. Tim's going to turn the corner as he does. 
Anybody going to get homesick on these streets because they've been a lot of major cities. Detroit, Chicago, Philadelphia, even Los Angeles for American Ninja Warrior. They film the competition rounds out here and they do it at night. That way the sun doesn't get in the eyes of one competitor over another and create an unfair advantage. And as I mentioned, these streets have been used as New York and that's where my co-host Jimmy Fallon lives. Hey everyone, welcome to New York. I got my start right here in New York on Saturday Night Live. This is actually my old neighborhood. I once got mugged over there. By an old woman. Tough lady. This is my favorite hot dog guy. Hey buddy, how's it going? Remember me? No. <laughs> Just like old times. Gotta love New York City. Hey, I'm walking here. I'm walking here. Hey, it's cool guys. I was just, you know, I was just walking there. So it's not exactly New York, but a lot of times when you see New York in the movies, it was shot right here on the Universal Metro sets. If you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. Even if you make it here on the Universal lot. And that's what it looks like behind the scenes. The camera can slide along the tracks there. The art department set designers, they create the rest of the illusion that this is New York. So as we follow you on the real life, sweep you up and finish. Colin literally does that. I mean, you're on board the ship, you're sailing to a lost island, you're encountering monsters and creatures from, you know, prehistoric times. Thank mm -hmm. you. 